pluripotent stem cell divide into multipotent stem cells multipotent stem cells can divide into committed stem cells now i have made the committed stem cells which are derived from the common lymphoid stem cell now these are pro natural killer cells and these committed cells will eventually go into peripheral circulation of course these committed cells will be pro natural killer cells will multiply then they will differentiate and eventually they will appear into peripheral circulation and when they will appear into peripheral circulation now they are called natural killer cells what are they called natural killer cells is a very special type of lymphocytes which are not b lymphocytes which are not t lymphocytes because they do not have the marker of b lymphocyte they do not have the marker of t lymphocytes is that right you know b lymphocyte is having cd90 and cd20 proteins these are not having cd19 these are not having cd20 it means they are not b cells and like t cells you know t cells are having cd3 but these natural killer cells do not have cd3 proteins so they are not even t cells so they are not b cells not t cells then we come to pro t cells pro t cells also start giving they differentiate along cells eventually the premature cells which are derivative of pro t cells they go into peripheral circulation and they get mature into thymus they get you can say mature into yeah they are trained into thymus so these naive t cells they will go into thymus and in the thymus they will be trained and after maturity they come back into yes circulation and now they are t lymphocytes what are they they are t lymphocytes right so we can say that from the you can say thymus these are the t lymphocyte which come out and these t lymphocytes which come out of thymus these are called cd3 yes they have a unique protein on the surface which is called cd3 so these are cd3 positive cells t cell that cd3 positive cells these t cells are divided into two types of cells t some t cells are cd4 positive and some are of course this is cd3 as well as cd4 positive and other t cells which are cd3 as well as cd8 positive right these which are cd4 positive these are called t helper naive and these are called t cytotoxic we'll discuss into detail in immunology but again let me repeat it that from the bone marrow there is pluripotent stem cell which can divide into common lymphoid stem cell from the common lymphoid stem cell we can get the pro t stem cells these pro t uh, cells make the uh, t immature t cells when they will go into thymus they will be trained there actually once they are trained into thymus because thymus help the t cell to express the t cell receptors as well as help the t cell to express cd4 proteins or cd eight proteins is that right so we can say t cells really get mature into thymus or functional after uh, getting training into thymus once they come out of thymus right these t cells can be uh, all t cells should have a cd3 protein so one of the hallmark protein which determine that particular cell particular lymphocyte is t cell or not t cell it depends on it is having cd3 molecule or not now all the t cells have cd3 molecule but some of them some of the t cells in addition to cd3 molecule also have cd4 and other in addition to cd3 molecule have also cd8 is that right now what really happens that when cd3 and cd8 cd3 and cd8 both are present these are called cd8 positive t cells cd8 positive t cells will talk in future in immunology that these cells act as yes these cells act as cytotoxic cells cd8 positive cells but cd4 positive cells right these can divide into two types of cells cd4 positive cells can divide into two types of cells right t helper 2 and t helper 1 is that right the major function of t helper 2 is that t helper 2 can stimulate 
the B cells and convert the B cell into, yes, what is it? Plasma cells. They convert into plasma cells. So B cell can be acted upon by the cytokines produced by T helper 2 and convert into plasma cell. And later on we'll see the function of T helper 1 is that it can convert monocytes or macrophages into highly active macrophages. Is that right? T helper 1, right? They can produce the chemical mediators or cytokines which can stimulate the macrophages. Especially these T helper 1 are master in producing interferon gamma and tumor necrotic factor. And T helper 2 are master in producing interleukin 4 and interleukin 5. Again, let me repeat it because it's worth repeating that these pro natural killer stem cell, they produce the product which are natural killer cell, which are not T cells, which are not B cells. Pro T stem cells produce the product which will be trained in thymus and after the thymic training, after the thymic training, these cells come out as T cells. These all T cells are CD3 positive and some of them are in addition to CD3, CD4 positive which are called T helper cells. Some of them in, in addition to CD3 are CD8 positive also which are called T cytotoxic cells. Now T helper cell have to help some immune component to function better. Now what we really see that these T helper cells, right, some of them convert into T helper 2, others convert into T helper 1. T helper 2 cell can produce interleukin 4 and 5. Interleukin 4 act as B cell growth factor. Interleukin 5 work as B cell differentiation factor. Again, interleukin 4 produced by the T helper 2 act as interleukin 4 work as B cell growth factor and interleukin 5 work as B cell, yes, differentiation factor. So interleukin 4 and 5 which are produced by T helper 2 help the B cell to convert into plasma cell. What are plasma cells? Of course active B cells which are actively producing yes antibodies which are actively producing antibodies. Then we can talk about T helper 1 cells. They are not going to help the B cells. They are going to help the monocytes and macrophages and T helper 1 produce gamma interferons and tumor necrotic factors especially and they activate act on the what is this monocyte and convert the monocyte into active macrophages even they can convert the monocytes or macrophages into epithelioid cells or they can convert them into giant cells and you must be knowing that activated macrophages and epithelioid cells which are modified macrophages or giant cells which are produced by the fusion of epithelioid cells, right? All these cells are produced by the action of gamma interferon and tumor necrotic factor on the macrophages. Again, let me repeat it. Macrophages, when they acted upon by the lower level of gamma interferon, they convert into super active macrophages. But when they are activated with moderate, more higher level of gamma interferon, these super active macrophages can be converted into epithelioid cells which are found in the granulomas and if there is too much high level of gamma interferon then some of the epithelioid cells fuse together and they convert into giant cells. So in TB granuloma you may find uh, activated macrophages, epithelioid cells and what is this? Giant cell and of course with a collar of lymphocytes which are converting monocytes into these cells. So we can say T helper 1 can help the granuloma formation, T helper 2 can help an antibody formation. That is why T helper 2 is helping the humoral immunity and T helper 1 is helping the, helping the cellular immunity and T cytotoxic is also the part of cellular immunity. Now we come to pro B cells. This pro B cells when these are activated right they convert into they mature into bone marrow and they are converted into B cells but already we have seen that when these B cells are acted upon by the T helper 2, they can convert into, what is this, plasma cells and produce the antibodies. So this was very briefly about the lymphoid cell production.